When you combine sugar with caffeine, you get a powerful combination of bad things that are going to happen to you. I'm going to get into those in just a second, but I just wanted to first show you how much sugar is in these energy drinks. An energy drink is something that you would perceive to be something not that unhealthy, right? If we compare it to a soda, well, what you're going to find out is that it's actually worse than Coca-Cola. Okay, let me let me explain. Let's first get into this one on here, Rockstar. Rockstar has 16 teaspoons of sugar. It has the most sugar of all of these, but it's not just regular sugar. It is a synthetic industrial created sugar. So it's not good for your liver, but 16 teaspoons. Then we get into the monster energy drink, which is 14 and a half teaspoons of sugar, not as much as this one right here. And then we have something called NOS, which is an enhanced mental focus drink. This one has 13 and a half teaspoons, okay? All of these right here have more sugar than a Coke because a Coke only has 13 teaspoons of sugar. But if we look at the caffeine, Rockstar has 160 milligrams. And also Monster has 160 milligrams and so does NOS. But Coca-Cola only has 45 milligrams so all three of these have three times the amount of caffeine as a Coke, and all three of them have more sugar. Yet somehow we perceive these to be healthier, but they're all not good for you because the type of sugar that they're putting in here and the amounts is just crazy too high. This has high fructose corn syrup. These also have synthetic sugars. Gatorade has a little more sugar than a Coke, like just under 14 teaspoons, okay? And Powerade has about 13 teaspoons of sugar. So all three of these are similar in sugars. Now, as far as caffeine and Gatorade, there isn't uh, any in this particular drink, but in other drinks, it goes anywhere between 23 milligrams to 200 milligrams of caffeine. And Powerade apparently does not have any caffeine. Then we get to this one called Celsius zero sugars. And of course, they put sucralose in there, the type of sweetener that isn't necessarily classified as a sugar, but it creates a similar damage that sugar creates, but just indirectly. I'm not going to get into that. But what you should know is this one has 270 milligrams of caffeine, over 100 milligrams more caffeine than these right here, and almost six times the amount of caffeine then a Coca-Cola. But now let's get into why you never want to combine a lot of sugar with a lot of caffeine. When you combine sugar with caffeine, you are creating a ticking time bomb. Let's get into a deep dive on what happens when you combine a lot of sugar and caffeine at the same time. You know, when people are doing this, I always like to ask, what problem are you trying to solve? Are you trying to solve your fatigue? And is this solution going to be the best solution or not? So let's kind of take a look at this, right? Let's first look at sugar. First question is, do you have low blood sugar that we can just add some sugar and raise it? Chances are your problem is not even a low blood sugar situation. But if it is, it will raise the blood sugar and give you a little boost in mental energy. And when I'm talking about a little boost, I'm talking about a very short term boost of mental energy, right? followed by a roller coaster crash right down here. And all the symptoms of low blood sugar are irritableness, brain fog, weakness, tiredness. That wouldn't actually occur if you didn't consume that sugar in the first place because a lot of these energy drinks are just filled with an ungodly amount of sugar. And where does the sugar go when you consume it? Does it go to the muscles? Probably not. It's going to go to the brain. The brain has the priority over incoming sugar, but it's really kind of a fake energy. It's not a real sustaining uh, long-term energy at all. It's not going to give you any type of endurance. Now, when we talk about energy in the body, we're really talking about the energy factory. It's called the mitochondria. The mitochondria are in the cells, and that is where all the energy is produced. And so food comes into this machine, and then it gets converted into an energy currency called ATP. So you can look at ATP as some energy that you can use. It's kind of like a battery. It's this reserve of energy that's just sitting there that you created by eating certain food and you can actually use it on demand. So when you eat food, it creates so many of these ATPs. When you consume sugar, there's actually another machine outside this machine that just deals with sugar, and, but it only gives you two ATP. Then what happens, it can go through here and produce more energy 
if this machine is working correctly. The reason I'm bringing this up because I'm trying to explain biochemistry in a really simple way. In order for you to create food into usable fuel, it has to go through a whole bunch of steps from here all the way through here and out this side right here. And in that process, each little step is dependent on what's called cofactors. These are the nutrients, B1, B2, B3, B5, biotin, coenzyme Q10, magnesium, iron, sulfur, lipoic acid. These are the helper things that allow that fuel to be metabolized or used or converted to this right here. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because the sugar that you're consuming in these energy drinks is completely empty of these right here. Now, they do add some of these cofactors into these drinks, okay? And they somehow they know that if they don't, you're gonna create a lot of deficiencies, right? Because your ability to make this energy is dependent on these guys right here. So if these aren't in the food that you eat, then the body's just gonna suck it from your tissues, from the reserve. This is why when you eat a lot of refined sugar, as in these drinks right here, you're gonna deplete these nutrients. Also, if you eat like food like fruit, for example, it has a lot of these nutrients. It also has antioxidants to protect against the massive amount of sugar that you're taking in. But of course, when you're consuming refined sugar, you don't get the benefit of antioxidants. So eventually you end up destroying this machine right here. And now you can only really get a small amount of energy from that sugar. This is why people that consume these energy drinks over a long period of time get more tired and more tired and more tired until the point where it doesn't give them any energy at all because the machine is broken. Another term for that is insulin resistance. Now, the other interesting thing that the sugar does is because there's so much sugar that comes into your, your gastrointestinal tract, when your body has this concentrated sugar, just like in a diabetic, what happens, it must dilute this concentration by pulling water out of the cells and into your intestines. And this is why when you consume a lot of sugar in sports drinks and energy drinks, you might have diarrhea, abdominal pain, and check this out, dehydration in the cells. Because when you consume this concentrated sugar, the body has to pull fluids out of the cell going from a normal cell to a raisin-like cell. So a lot of these sport hydrating drinks are really dehydrating drinks. We get like a roller coaster effect of blood sugar. You might need more of the drink to have more mental energy. So this is gonna affect your mood, create inflammation, fatigue, affects the gut microbiome because you're consuming a lot of extra sugar that feeds pathogens. But one of the big things that consuming a lot of refined sugar does is it depletes potassium because there is a potassium sodium pump in your body. You have like millions and millions and millions of them all over the place. And this potassium sodium pump powers like a battery, your nerves and your muscles and allows everything to work. Well, one thing about refined sugar is it's going to deplete you of potassium. A lot of these drinks do not nearly have enough potassium. And unless you're getting it from the diet, you're just creating a lot of potassium deficiency. Then all of a sudden the muscles and the nervous system start getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Our bodies need a tremendous amount of potassium and many people don't get that much. I mean, we need like 4,700 milligrams every single day. We need a massive amount of potassium for a reason. It powers the sodium potassium pump. And I don't think a lot of people talk about this, but as you consume more refined sugar, you become potassium depleted, and then all these functions that potassium gave you kind of disappear, like the regulation of your heart rate. So the heart rate starts going higher. Also, potassium is a physiological tranquilizer at night. It helps you calm down. Let's shift gears to caffeine, right? So now we're gonna add caffeine to sugar. What does caffeine do? Believe it or not, a little bit of caffeine actually can help the mitochondria, a little bit but the amount of caffeine in these are off the chart. What does caffeine actually do? Does it give you energy? No, it does not give you energy. What it does is it blocks a certain chemical compound that normally makes you tired, but it's not giving you energy. It's tricking the body into thinking it's not tired. The problem with the caffeine in these energy drinks is just way, way too much. So you can really overdo it. A little bit of caffeine is fine, a lot is not good for a lot of things. Number one, it's gonna increase adrenaline, heart rate goes up, blood pressure goes up, 
stress on the cardiovascular system. Another interesting thing about caffeine is it's a diuretic. It's gonna pull water out. So here you are drinking an energy drink or a sports drink, and hydrating drink, and the sugar and the caffeine, I don't think these have caffeine, but other ones do, basically dehydrate you. So you take these to get energy and to be hydrated, but they actually create fatigue and dehydration. Also, it creates a stimulus on your adrenal glands. It's gonna get them working a lot more than they should, and it's gonna create adrenal fatigue. So eventually, when you start out, you have a lot of energy, and then over a period of time, you're just more tired, more tired, more tired. It's called chronic fatigue syndrome. It's gonna affect your sleep too. A better solution would be to get the diet corrected. So the actual food gives you long-term sustained level energy. Most people do not need to add sugar to the diet. Their body can easily make energy from the fat that you have in your body, also from this machine, if it works correctly. So I'm just trying to increase the awareness on too many of these over time, comes with a package, and there's a much better way to be hydrated and create more energy uh, from using food, by consuming more electrolytes or actual salt. And as a side note, uh, if you're deficient in sodium, you will have weak muscles. Salt is important to take with water if you're working out and you're sweating. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.